From what the pairing of this particular sun and planet mean to whether it's something that we could habitate and more, join us as we reveal to you KOI 456.04, new exoplanet system that is a mirror image of Earth and the Sun. For us here on Earth, there is a desire to not just look amongst the stars for various things that can help us find out more about the universe, we're looking for things that are quite simply like us, meaning that we're constantly searching for planets outside our solar system, known as exoplanets, that might be like Earth, or might be, at the very least, close to it. To that end, we have been successful. The number of potentially habitable exoplanets keeps growing as more and more worlds orbiting distant stars are discovered. Usually they're found via satellites, probes, or observing data that has been gathered and seeing something that people have missed before. But either way, they're being found, and the results have been interesting in various ways. For example, most of these planets discovered have been found orbiting red dwarf stars. Since they are dimmer and planets are easier to detect around them, and also are the most common stars in our galaxy. But now researchers at the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research, MPS, in Göttingen, Germany, and others from the US have announced that they have found a new exoworld less than twice the size of Earth, which orbits a sun-like star, meaning one that is like our own sun, Kepler-160, just over 3,000 light years from our solar system. What makes this discovery of particular interest is that the planet appears to be orbiting its star at a similar distance as Earth's from the Sun, and receives almost the same amount of energy from its star as Earth does. This would make it the most similar to the Earth-Sun system of any exoplanetary system discovered so far, almost a mirror image. The peer-reviewed findings were published in Astronomy and Astrophysics, Volume 638, ID-810, and submitted to ARXIV on June 3, 2020. The research also includes scientists from the Sonnenberg Observatory, the University of Göttingen, the University of California in Santa Cruz, and NASA. Now, some of you might be confused as to why we care about this mirror image, especially since it's clear that the planet isn't exactly like Earth, as it's nearly twice the size. But in this particular case, it's not about the planet but the positioning of it compared to the star as well as the star itself. As noted, many planets that have been found have been seen around red dwarf stars, which is fine in context, but it means that the planet has to be closer to the star to get the right amount of energy to produce water, life, and more. We, however, orbit a yellow dwarf star, and where we are in our solar system is quite literally perfect for having life. The sun gives us energy and light, and yet, thanks to our atmosphere and the distance the solar radiation has to travel, we don't get burned up, nor are we too cold, which is what is the case with Venus and Mars, respectively. You'd think that it would be easy to go and find another planet that has the perfect positioning to the yellow sun it orbits to be like Earth, but you would be wrong. We've come close at times, but KOI 456.04, that's the name of the planet, is the literal closest we've gotten to finding a planet that could mirror our own in terms of how it interacts with the Sun. So thus you can see why people are so excited about this. While the new planet hasn't fully been confirmed yet, the paper states that the probability of it being a real planet and not a false alarm is 85%. By far most planetary candidates found do end up being confirmed later with more observations. From the paper, the Vespa software predicts that the signal has an astrophysical false positive probability of FPP underscore 3 equals 1.8 E minus 3 when the multiplicity of the system is taken into account. Kepler venting diagnostics yield a multiple event statistic of MES equals 10.7, which corresponds to an approximate 85% reliability against false alarms due to instrumental artifacts such as rolling bands. So what is this probable new world like? From what we know so far, it transits its star as seen from Earth. It is estimated to have a radius of 1.9 Earth radii, making it a super-Earth, and orbits its star in 378 days, which is only roughly 13 days more than our own world, and thus wouldn't be too much of an adjustment to make. Since the star is similar to our Sun, the planet receives a similar amount of energy and radiation as Earth does, 
about 93%. This also means that the planet resides in a similar spot in the habitable zone around the star, where temperatures could allow liquid water to exist, as Earth does in the habitable zone around our Sun. The lead author of the new study, Rene Heller, said in a statement, KOI 45601 is relatively large compared to many other planets that are considered potentially habitable, but it's the combination of this less than double the size of Earth planet and its solar type host star that make it so special and familiar. Before we continue, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve our content for you, the viewer. Also be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. If KOI 456.01's atmosphere isn't too dense or non-Earth-like, then there's a good chance it could have similar surface conditions to Earth, which obviously is a big guess right now as the planet is very far away and it would be hard to go and calculate those kinds of conditions, but it's not impossible. The researchers believe, though, that if the planet's atmosphere is moderate, like Earth's, then the average temperature should be around 41 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius, which would make it a bit colder than we have here on Earth. But it wouldn't be impossible to live on, obviously. There are, of course, still a lot of unknowns, such as the composition of the atmosphere and the planet itself, and whether there is any surface water. This, in many ways, are the biggest unknowns that kind of hinder the mirror image of this pairing, because anyone who studies Earth will find out that the atmosphere was not perfect from the get-go at all. Over time, things happened to make it the composition that we have now. For example, there was an extinction-level event known as the Great Oxygenation that brought oxygen into the atmosphere at such levels that were never seen before that it nearly wiped out all life on the planet. Life adapted, and oxygen was the major part of the atmosphere ever since. Who knows what has happened on the planet up to now that made up the atmosphere? Plus, if you study the atmosphere, you'll see that it's not all oxygen, not even close. 78% of it is nitrogen, 21% is oxygen, 0.9% argon, and 0.1% other gases. That mixture may seem odd, but it keeps us alive in a big way. And we should have to hope that the atmosphere on KOI 456.04 or else we'll need oxygen tanks when we do potentially colonize the planet. Then, of course, there is the question of the surface water. The Earth is over 71% water, and while it's fair to say that KOI 456.04 doesn't need to be exactly that amount, it would help, especially since, again, it's a planet that is about two times the size of Earth. The problem there, though, is that even if the water is there, even in low supplies, it wouldn't be clear at present, or even when we land on the planet, as to whether we can drink it. And we're not solely discussing the idea of salt water and fresh water. We're talking pollutants, contaminants, and even basic minerals of the areas that the water would be held in. If it's something that's hard to filter out that could affect us using it or hinder the notion of life living in it. That is why people are hesitant to call KOI 456.04 something that it's not, because to do so would be speculation, and that cannot be afforded in a matter as important as this. Kepler-160 was already known to have at least two planets, Kepler-160b and Kepler-160c. KOI 456.04 would be the newest, and it turns out there may actually be four planets in total, Heller said. Our analysis suggests that Kepler-160 is orbited not by two, but by a total of four planets. Before you ask, well, aren't those planets just as likely to be habitable? The answer to that is not likely. The other two already known planets, Kepler-160b and Kepler-160c, are both larger than Earth and orbit much closer to the star. This makes them a lot less likely to be habitable due to the exposure from the sun's rays and the radiation it exudes. That's why Venus is a greenhouse planet, because it was heavily affected by the Sun's closer proximity to it. Kepler-160c has an oddly distorted orbit, leading some scientists to theorize that another third planet, Kepler-160d, was waiting to be discovered. Heller and his colleagues found evidence for its existence indirectly, since it doesn't transit in front of the star as seen from Earth. Heller and his co-author, Michael Hipke, developed a new technique for searching for exoplanets in old data from the Kepler Space Telescope. They decided to use a detailed physical model of stellar brightness variation instead of just looking for a step like jump to dimming and then jump back to normal brightness pattern 
in stellar light curves, as had been done previously for almost two decades. Heller explained, Our improvement is particularly important in the search for small Earth-sized planets. The planetary signal is so faint that it's almost entirely hidden in the noise of the data. Our new search mask is slightly better in separating a true exoplanetary signal from the noise in the critical cases. If KOI 456.01 is any indication, then the process seems to be working. Heller and his colleagues had also been able to find 18 other new exoplanets so far in the old Kepler data, which means there could be a lot more to explore in the data once it's been sifted through. While KOI 456.01 is still regarded as a planetary candidate, the odds are very good that it is the real deal, or at least the real deal in that it could be something good. As we've noted, there are flaws here that would need to be addressed and explained before going full force into trying to get to the planet to colonize it. Aside from the atmosphere and water problems that we discussed earlier, the major problem is distance. As stated, Kepler-160 is 3,000 light years away, making it a star system that is well beyond our grasp right now, and maybe for a very long time. Don't forget we're aiming to launch a mission to Mars within this decade, and it'll take a long time just to get them from Earth to Mars with our best rockets. Now imagine trying to take a trip that is 3,000 light years away? It wouldn't be easy or short. For context, if we use the space shuttle Discovery to try and get there, it would take an unfeasibly long time to arrive at Kepler-160. We say this because the Discovery can travel 5 miles per second, and thus to travel one light year would take about 37,200 years. Now times that by 3,000 and you see the immediate problem here. Plus, there is also problems concerning the size of the planet and how it would emit its gravity upon us, meaning that the more mass this two times Earth-sized planet has, the more gravity it'll exert, as well as the surface conditions as a whole. Just because something has water doesn't mean the ground is fertile or able to host life. They're not mutually exclusive. So by that token, do we just write this off as a unique find and move on? Not even close because while this isn't likely to be a planet colonized by humanity anytime soon, outside of a major innovation in technology, this mirror image pairing does give us something that we honestly didn't have before. Hope. How so? As noted early on in this video, the pairing of Kepler-160 and KOI-456.01 is something of a unique find because it's the only pairing of an Earth-like planet and a yellow sun that we've found so far in space. We found plenty of Earth-like planets, but not ones that perfectly match the orientation that we have with the Sun. So because we found this, even if it's still not perfect, it means that there is hope that there is more like it out there. And that's a big deal. Because if there is a pairing like this 3,000 light years away, there's nothing to say that it couldn't be found in a system much closer to where we are. And if that is found, it could open up many possibilities. As a result, we must look at KOI 456.01, study it as best as we can to learn more about it, and then work on trying to find more like it. Because who knows, the next one we find might just be the second Earth we have been searching the universe for. Thanks for watching. What did you think of this look at the mirror image pairing of KOI 456.01 and its sun? Do you think that this gives us new hope for finding another Earth-like planet that we can potentially colonize one day? And if so, where do you think we'll find the next one? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the channel.